I find this object more than just a little bit interesting. If you pay close attention to it, you can see that it's one unbroken continuous circuit all the way around. And I finally managed to prove to myself that it's possible to construct it from one piece. But now I think I want to make a nicer one. And what could possibly make it look nicer than making it from solid black walnut? I am presently prototyping a few related puzzle designs, but I haven't finalized any of the designs as of yet. So for now I'm just going to make a solid piece version. In case you want to try your hand at making this project, you'll need to print out two of these templates one to cut out and affix to the project itself, and one so that you can stare at it in confusion. It looks like the end grain is wet here, but that's actually paraffin wax. The wax keeps moisture from exiting the wood too quickly during the drying process, because it takes a few years to dry a chunk that's this thick, so drying it out slowly helps to minimize those little cracks. Crafting a perfect cube is somewhat of an art in itself, so look for that in a future video. It almost seems a shame to destroy this. Alright, put on your thinking caps. The first order of business is how to orient the first three templates. This really isn't so bad if you stop and look at the drawing long enough. That is that. This is this. And this square is this square. And it would be nice if that were all there was to this process, but it actually gets a lot more complicated. And the reason for that is there's more information required to make this shape than is actually presented by this drawing. And even if you were to have an, a complete orthographic representation, meaning that if you had an image of all six possible ways of looking at the shape, it still wouldn't be enough information. And you'll come to understand what I mean later on in the video. Now, of course, I'm not trying to discourage you. You just have to keep your head down, stick with the plan, and keep picking at complicated problems like this, doing the things that you know that you can do without messing, messing anything up along the way. And then eventually, the whole picture will start to emerge. So for now, just stick with the procedure. My prototype was considerably smaller, so I only had to put a template on three of the faces, but because this one's so much larger, I'll have to drill from both sides, so I will have to use six templates. If you haven't already, take notice of the corners of the template. 
and you'll see that one of these things is not like the other. This causes a symmetry to it. So this is the same thing as that. I'm trying to be as clear as possible and I know that it's going to look like chicken scratch but this will be the opposite of the red and it will be positioned like that and notice that the arrows point to the color side that they are adjacent to. Well, at this point I have finished drilling what resemble the eyes and the nose all the way through on both sides, which leaves me just that mouth-like thing to do, which puts me at about three-eighths of the way done. But it gets easier as you go because it becomes increasingly like Swiss cheese in the middle. So you will see it when it's finished. See? That's a happy face. The next step is to cut out all of the white squares. I definitely want to take it easy and approach my target slowly. I was a bit conservative, but I think I can take a little bit more off if we allow the edges of these holes as evidence. I think I can make one more adjustment to bring it in a little bit closer. Right now it's still pretty easy to see the pattern and to see the three corners that need to be knocked away. But next we'll pick another side and do the same thing. At this point, it's very easy to become confused, 
and I know this all too well because I did very much so during the prototyping, but you just have to keep your mind focused on the relevant parts of the pattern. So to finish this off, on the blue sides, we will take these three corners away, which will be these from this perspective. These colored regions can be safely cut all the way down to where they intersect with this plane. And the amount that can be taken away is, in my case, two cubic inches. It's not all that important to consider the color scheme at this point. It's more important to consider this lightning bolt shape, which will be found on all three sections. It's really starting to take its shape nicely. There are only a few major connections that still have to be broken, most noticeably these three in the center that will release this center bit. And that will have to be done on both sides, but after that, really most of the remaining connections are minor. I'm slowly moving towards the finishing process, paying closer and closer attention to finer and finer details as I go forward. I expect to be using some shaping tools, rotary sander is very handy, and a little detail sander like this. Very nice to get into these places. I of course won't be able to show you all of the process. I tried to be as thorough as I could with this tutorial, but of course there's going to be a lot that I can't mention because this is a tedious process and it mostly comes down to how much you're willing to invest in it. As for me, I have to get these three remaining connections and it will be completely free. I'm leaving them in for strength for the time being as long as I can and also I need a more elegant tool to remove them. I think that I'm finished with the nerve-wracking part now. 
All that really remains is to sand, sand, and sand some more. And then I'll give it a nice finish of teak oil, probably. I would like to mention that these before us are the tools that I found to be most effective. That's a hacksaw blade. This little rasp, round rasp was surprisingly useful. And this is especially useful for flattening it out. It's just a piece of sandpaper, spray adhesive to a stick. It will stand upright on its own about 50% of the time. I'm sure if you think about it, you'll understand why. And that's it for this one. So I hope that you found this to be of interest. I would like to leave you with one final afterthought. This is just electrical tape. See you next time.